you know in the last class we were looking at the formation of a spherical blast wave from an explosion which released let us say E0 joules of energy. In other words, we are looking at a spherical blast wave which is formed and this spherical blast wave keeps propagating outward. We told ourselves that this lead blast wave at time t is at a distance r s from the source of energy release. We looked at the energy balance and what did the blast wave do? You form a blast wave, let us let's take a look at a blast wave, you form a blast wave, it keeps propagating out at different times it keeps moving out and therefore, this energy which is deposited is dispersed within the region of the blast wave as the blast wave propagates out. Therefore, we look at the we looked at the conservation of energy namely E 0 joules of energy which is dissipated in the medium and which creates the spherical blast wave. What did we do in the last class? Let us quickly Go, go through the point because we will continue on the energy release and how the blast wave changes. Therefore, for that I again look at uh, the, the energy that means we dissipate some energy. The blast wave is at a distance R s from the source this is the lead shock wave. We look at the energy which is balanced or we look at the energy which is available at some radius r and of width that means, I look at a spherical shell of thickness let us say d r at a distance r and now the blast wave is at a distance r from r s from the source. Therefore, maybe this is my distance, this is my distance let us say r s over here, the, the, the initial pressure jumps up over here and then maybe the thing expands out. We looked at the expansion in the context of the mass conservation and we found that well most of the mass tends to be concentrated at the front and thereafter there is not much mass left because all the density is over here. Therefore, there is something like a gradient over here. We were interested to write the energy which is contained in this small spherical shell over here element of the shell over here. That means, the blast wave is here, the energy gets dissipated, I am just interested in the energy here and we got the expression d e is equal to the kinetic energy and what was the kinetic energy? The, the volume of this element is the surface area is 4 pi r square into d r 4 pi r square into d r which is the volume into the kinetic energy per unit volume is rho u square divided by 2 plus you, you have the internal energy and initially let us say the medium outside has an internal energy E naught, we have E minus E naught into rho is the change in the internal energy here. We, we considered that the internal energy change due to the blast wave processing is very much greater than the initial internal energy and this drops out. We wrote E is equal to C V T, C V we said C P minus C V is R and therefore, we could write E as equal to uh, C V T, C V could be written as gamma is as equal to R divided that is the specific gas constant divided by gamma minus 1 into T, R T is equal to P by rho and therefore, this, this equation became D E is equal to 4 pi R square into D R into I have rho and what is this rho? Let us be very careful it is at distance r from the it, it is at a distance r from the source of explosion u at r square divided by 2 plus I have now p at distance r because r t is equal to p by rho p by and p gets cancelled divided by gamma minus 1 is the energy which is available in this spherical shell. Now, I integrate the total energy from here to here that means, I integrate out from 0 to R s and that will be equal to this energy and therefore, the expression which we got was E 0 that is the energy in joules which is dissipated to form the blast wave 
is equal to I, I now take 4 pi which is a constant outside and now I take integral 0 to R s of I have rho r into the value of u at r square divided by 2 plus I have p r divided by gamma minus 1 into I have r square into d r. This is the expression which we got. Now, when we look at the distribution, we say from starting from r s, it keeps decreasing over here or it changes over here. I can as well say that my density at r divided by the initial density, I could write it as equal to psi of r by r s because why, why do I have to write this? You know, initially I have a jump and then it keeps coming down. Therefore, we wrote this as rho r divided by rho s into rho s by rho 0, rho s by rho 0 is known and therefore, the density distribution as a function of the initial density could be written in this particular form. Similarly, I could also write the other expressions. The other expressions where we could write the value of u dot by R s. That means, let me let me put down the value of R specifically, the velocity behind the shock at the radius R divided by R s dot is equal to let us say phi into R by R s. Similarly, I have p at R divided by rho 0 into R s dot square is equal to f into R by R s. All function of the distance from the shock to maybe I am interested at this particular r, I am looking at the value of r by r s. Therefore, I would like to solve this equation subject to some distributions like this. In the last class, when we did the mass conservation, we took a power law profile and maybe we will we'll consider some of these things again for energy balance. But as of now, I would like to substitute these expressions into this particular energy balance equation and try to solve for it. But while doing so, I can also represent this in a slightly different way. Let, let, let me try to tell what, what I want to do. All what we are telling is we have R s over here. At R s, I have a step change taking place in maybe the density, maybe the particulate velocity, maybe the pressure and thereafter it decays down, it decays from R s to 0. I am interested in a distance r over here. I can as well change the coordinate system such that I am always saying that well the shock is moving, I am ha always having r s as a variable, but I am considering at a particular r s the value of r. Therefore, I can consider let us say zeta is equal to r by r s and I could say well I am considering the case wherein the lead shock is at 1, I am considering the properties let us say now my coordinate shifts to zeta, I am considering the value of zeta over here which is less than 1, I am looking at the property at this particular value of zeta. Therefore, if zeta is equal to r by r s, well can I change these coordinates then, then automatically r square becomes equal to r s square into d zeta and well d zeta or dr, let us, let us substitute the value of dr over here, dr from this expression becomes equal to equal to r s for a particular value of r s. I have r s into r, r square is equal to r s square into zeta, I am sorry, r, r square is equal to zeta square into r s, d r is equal to r s into d zeta and the limits of integration instead of being r s over here, it becomes r s by r s which is 1 and therefore, the above equation for the energy balance will now be given by E 0 is equal to 4 pi into 0 to 1 into now rho r, rho r can be written as equal to uh, zeta rho 0, rho r is equal to rho 0 into psi of zeta into u r, u, u r is equal to phi that means r s dot. And what is it we have? U r squared, therefore, r s dot square into phi zeta square divided by 2 plus I have the value of pressure r, 
pressure r is equal to rho 0 r s dot square into 5 zeta. Therefore, I have rho 0 into r s dot square into phi f of zeta divided by gamma minus 1 and this value is multiplied by r squared, r squared is equal to r s squared into zeta square and dr is equal to r s into d zeta and therefore, if I were to simplify this equation, I get E 0 that is the energy release is equal to, now I take the terms outside, well rho 0 is the ambient, the shock is moving or the blast wave at that point is moving with a velocity of r s dot square, therefore I get 4 pi into rho 0 into r s dot square, this is the expression for uh, this taking out then I get the value 0 to 1 and what is it I get? I get the value of psi at zeta divided by the value of velocity that is the velocity at that particular point is phi divided phi square psi phi square divided by 2 plus I get f of zeta to the power gamma minus 1 into what is left over here? I have R s and R s cube, well at a particular radius I am interested therefore, R s cube can be taken outside and I have e zeta square into d zeta. This is the expression I get and therefore, now I, I, I take I bring the terms which are outside the integral sign over here, I get E 0 by 4 pi into rho 0 R s cube into R s dot square is equal to this particular integral 0 to 1 of let me take we, let me recognize that psi is a function of zeta, phi is a function of zeta, f is a function of zeta and therefore, I can write it as psi phi square divided by 2 keeping in mind that these are all functions of zeta such that I do not need to carry these symbols as I am doing plus f over gamma minus 1 into zeta square into d zeta. Now, you know this expression tells us that the energy deposited in the medium of density rho 0 is there. This energy if I look at the denominator I have 4 pi r s cube 4 upon 3 pi r s cube is the volume this is the mass this is something like the kinetic energy term and therefore, this expression is an indication of how much of the energy or how much of this energy deposited gets into the kinetic energy of the medium provided that the entire medium, let us go back to this, if the entire shock medium were to travel at r s dot square that is the net kinetic energy, then this expression tells us that what part of the energy travels at the with, with the kinetic energy such that the velocity is r s dot square and this is what this expression tells and therefore, this integral denotes part of the energy which is getting converted into kinetic energy provided all the particles are travelling at the blast wave speed namely r s dot square. You know if I look at this expression a little more closely, you know yesterday we looked at this point also, we said well zeta is equal to 1, at zeta is equal to 1 if I am interested in rho by rho 0 which is equal to your psi and psi we are plotting between 0 to this over the, that is zeta equal to 0 to zeta is equal to 1, we found well the slope is like this. Similarly, if I, if I were to take the value of let us say phi as a function of zeta and you know at zeta is equal to 1, whereas there is a, a jump in, in velocity or there is a change in velocity and there is a slope in velocity and similarly for pressure, there is a jump in pressure at zeta is equal to 1 and this jump there is a slope that means between 1 and 0, there is a slope over here. And therefore, you know we expect there to be something like a power law and this is what we said, Porzel used, Zeker used these equations again, we said well uh, William Ray also used these equations to solve for this and you know there are different ways of solving, we could get these things analytically. For instance, we solve the conservation equations in a blast sort of numerically or we use the perturbation techniques to solve for it or we use the the similarity solutions, we will look at similarity solutions a little later. 
you know we can always get these slopes and therefore, if we are talking in terms of strong shocks, well the jump conditions at zeta is equal to 1 do not really change with the Mach number and therefore, we would expect this particular integral to be near a constant namely, if I denote this integral by let us say i, i should be near about a constant and if we really calculate these things using different numerical methods or as I said may be a perturbation method or let us say the, the similarity solutions, I get i is equal to around 0 0.421 for the case of the sphere spherical wave which we are considering. Therefore, we tell ourselves well this integral is expected to be a constant and therefore, I can write this value, let us write this value, I get E0 by 4 pi into rho 0 into rs cube into rs dot square is equal to a constant. This constant is equal to i which we just now said is equal to this particular integral and this integral or which is a constant tells you what is a fraction of the energy which is deposited gets into the kinetic energy of the medium and this kinetic energy of the medium we evaluate it at the shock, shock velocity or the blast velocity at that point in time. Therefore, if this is a constant can I, can I use this equation to interpret something? Well, for a given energy release E0 in a given medium of density rho 0 that means let us put down for a given value of E0 joules in a given medium of density rho 0 kilogram per meter cube, what is it I get? You know E0 I have specified, rho 0 I have specified therefore, it is a constant therefore, immediately I tell myself well according to this equation R s cubed into R s dot square is equal to a constant. What is it I get? I get R s cubed into R s square is a constant or rather from this equation I get R s dot is equal to a constant. Let us say this constant is B into R s to the power minus 3 by 2. Well, if you recall in the second lecture what we had, we had used the dimensionless method of deriving the decay of a blast wave, we had got the identical expression. Let us take a look at this again, we have, we have derived R s cubed into R s dot square is a constant, let us differentiate this. If I differentiate this by parts, I get R s dot square into differential here that is 3 R s square into R s dot plus I, I now keep the first value R, uh, constant R s cube into I get R s 2 dot into I have 2 into R s dot is equal to 0, constant is equal to 0. Let me again repeat R s dot square into differential of the first term 3 R s dot square into, into 3 into R s square into R s dot plus I have over here uh, R s cube which I am which I am this is the first term and differential of the second term is R s 2 dot into 2 R s dot and what is it I get? Immediately I tell myself well in these two terms if I were to take one on the left hand side I have R s 2 dot into R s cube into 2 over here into R s dot is equal to minus 3 on the right hand side, I take it on the right hand side, I have R s dot cube into R s square and if I were to now take out the common terms over here, well R s square cancels here gives me R s and I have R s dot over here gives me R s dot square and therefore, I get the value of R s 2 dot into R s divided by R s dot square is equal to minus 3 by 2 which was again the result which we had got from the dimensionless analysis. In other words, there is a decay that is the shock is decelerating because of the negative sign, we got the shock velocity in terms of this and the same results which we got by dimensionless, dimensionless analysis or dimensional analysis we are able to get through the energy conservation. This is point 1 of the energy equation, this must be clear, we have solved the energy equation and we get back the condition well in a blast wave what is it we are telling ourselves in a blast wave well you have the streak diagram temperature versus rs 
you form strong wave and it keeps decaying or rather in the frame of reference of Rs dot versus Rs, you start with a wave and it keeps as the distance increases, the, the velocity at the front decreases, well this is the same signature for Ms dot also. Well, this comes from the energy equation. Let us try to see whether I can use the energy equations to better advantage to get some more characteristics of these blast waves. Mind you, we must keep something in mind. When we did all this, we presumed over here that the initial energy of the medium is small. In other words, we told ourselves, well, the blast wave must be strong enough such that the value of E0 can be neglected. Second is we also use these profiles which were strictly true only for the case when Mach number of the blast wave was quite high that means we are talking of strong blast wave and therefore the conditions what we have derived here are suited only for this initial region or for the initial region over here. Having said that let us go into some more details, some more characteristics of the blast wave and try to solve some 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 more param for some more parameters let let's pick up on this equation itself let's pick up on this equation namely over here e0 by 4 pi let me write it over here we have e0 that is the energy release in a medium rho 0 is equal to we 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 don't need to consider the integral let let me put it in terms of the fraction what we had got we got e0 divided by 4 pi rho 0 r s cube into r s dot square is equal to i. Now, I want to slightly transform this equation into something which is more usable, which will help me to scale different types of blast waves and let us therefore, divide the numerator and denominator by p 0 that is e 0 by p 0 divided by 4 pi rho 0. I also divide the denominator by p 0 into I get R s cubed into R s dot square is equal to I over here. I have just copied this equation here. I have E 0 4 pi rho 0 R s cubed R s dot square is equal to I. I get this particular expression. Now, let me do something. Let me multiply the denominator by gamma and also divide by gamma such that I still retain the same. If now I look at this particular equation, I have gamma P 0 by rho 0 is equal to A 0 square that is the sound speed in the free stream medium that is ahead of the blast wave. And I also know well R s dot square divided by A 0 square is equal to the Mach number of the shock, Mach number m s is equal to R s by A naught. And therefore, substituting this expression in this particular one and what is it we will get? We will get the value of E 0 by P 0 divided by 4 pi gamma into m s square is equal to i, which is a constant. We say it is equal to around when the for the spherical case with which we are right now dealing, it is equal to something like 0 0.423. Therefore, now let us let us take a look at this particular expression whether it will help us to simplify things. Well, in this equation 4 pi gamma into m s square I think I have still to write the value of R s cubed is equal to i. Now, if I were to look at the parameters, now I say well E 0, E 0 is equal to energy release in joules. What is a joule? Joule is a Newton meter. If I look at the value of pressure, pressure is Pascal which is Newton per meter square. And if I look at the dimensions of E 0 by P 0, I find that the dimension is equal to Newton meter by Newton per meter which is equal to meter cube, Newton and Newton gets cancelled it becomes meter cube or rather if now I say I am looking at the value of E 0 by P 0 to the power one third I get the unit as equal to meter. Therefore, now I tell myself well E 0 by P 0 is equal to meter cube or E 0 by P 0 to the power 1 by 3 is a meter and therefore, I can talk in terms of E 0 by P 0 as a length scale which is associated that is a length scale associated when an energy is impulsively released in a medium 
whose density is p0. That means, I say length scale of an explosion, I define length scale of an explosion as equal to E0 by P0 and it tells me if an energy E0 joules is, is deposited in a medium of pressure P0, I get a length scale and this length scale of an explosion I denote by R0, so much meters. In other words, when I have an energy release E0 joules in a medium of P0, the ratio of E0 P0 is equal to the explosion length square and therefore, I use this explosion length in this particular expression and what is it I get? Let us let, let's put that down. I get now the value of over here, I get R, R0 explosion length square divided by 4 pi gamma into the, the value of m square into R s cube is equal to i or rather from this can I get the value of let us say I, I take uh, the, 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 the R naught, I bring it here, I get explicitly the value of m s square that is the Mach number of the blast wave. What, what it is it going to come? It is going to come as equal to 1 over 4 pi into gamma into i into I get R s by R naught cube. This is the value of the Mach number of the lead blast wave. Now, what does this expression tell us? All what we are telling is instead of considering the distance, if I consider the distance which is divided by the equivalent explosion length, that means I have the distance which is scaled, then I get a value of Mach number square which is given by this. If I look at this expression, well gamma is 3.14 for, if I am sorry pi is 3.142 gamma for particular air is 1.4 i we said is a constant around 0.423 then what we find m square is a function of only r s by r naught cube. In other words, what has happened? When we reduce the energy release in terms of an equivalent length scale, namely the explosion length, what is it we have done? Let us let, let's take a look at the figure again and try to interpret this result. We tell ourselves, we will go back to the streak diagram with which we are all familiar by now. We say this is the distance traveled by the lead blast wave. Initially, if some energy is deposited in a medium, I get this to be my blast wave. Let us say that the energy release is E 0 1 joules, I strong form a strong shock wave, it decays. If now I deposit much higher value of energy, what is going to happen? Well, the shock is going to be get started strongly and it decays after a longer time. Well, this is for the case of E 0 2 joules in which E 0 2 joules is greater than E 0 1 joules. If now I deposit even a much larger value of energy, what is it I get? Well, the, the for since the energy released is higher, it travels a further distance. This is E 0 3 joules and therefore, maybe if the, the depending on the energy release, I get for the same time, maybe I, I get a blast which is, which is further away or rather if I were to put this particular figure in terms of let us say the, the Mach number or the R s dot as a function of R s, what is it I get? You recall, yes we looked at the decay, initially I get a for E 0 1, I get this type of result, maybe for E 0 2, maybe I get some result like this, we use the blue color, maybe I get E 0 2 like this, maybe when I talk in terms of E 0 3. I get a result like this. That means, I get at same distance when energy release is higher, I expect a stronger shock and this is what it tells and therefore, what is it we are telling? Well, R s dot depends on this, well R s dot divided by A 0 is M s over here, it has this dependence and what happens? Instead of using R s, if I use the value of R s by R naught, what is it I get? Now, I, I am able to convert this figure into a figure which says if I use the scale distance R s by R naught and I am looking at m s square from this particular expression, all what it tells is well I have a single curve for the value of E 0 1, E 0 2, E 0 3 irrespective of the energy release which gets apportioned here, I get a single curve and therefore, I am in a better position to solve the equations and this way 
of characterizing the distance traveled by the shock in terms of the explosion length is what is known as shock scaling. That means we are able to scale the Mach number of the shock in terms of the scale distance and I do not really need to consider the energy gets embedded here and therefore, I do not need this multiple energy curves to do that. I can solve the equation straightforward. That means, let us let us think in terms of a problem. All what we say is the following. We deposit some energy in the medium. Let us say E 0 joules. If the pressure is P 0, I get the explosion length R naught is equal to E 0 by P 0 for the spherical as 1 by 3. And once I know this, well, I use this particular expression R naught cube by 4 pi uh, R uh, m s square is equal to 1 over 4 pi gamma i into R s at the particular distance R s since R naught is known, I can calculate the value of my m s square. Therefore, we let us let us take a look at this expression again. We we plot some figures over here. I I I show this on this figure, maybe I look at m s square, I substitute the value of these things and what is it I get? I get the value m s square is equal to 0 0.1343 divided by r s by r naught cube. Now, if I were to plot this, what is it I get? I get maybe the value of m s square, m s let us say I take the under root and I plot it as a function of r s by r 0. And what does it I get? When r s by r 0 is 0 0.2, the value of my Mach number is 4.1 from the above equation. I When the value of r s by r naught is 0 0.3, I get the value as 2.2. When the value is around 0.4, and how do I get it? I just substitute the value here, I divide this, this gives me the value. When it is 0 0.4, the value is 1.47, 1.45, I am sorry. And when it is 0 0.5, the Mach number is 1.037. In other words, 4.1, 2.2, 1.45, 1.03, 7 and therefore, this is my Mach number distribution. And what is it I must infer from this? Well, I made a strong blast assumption, but I keep getting numbers and strong blast is normally we found when we were looking at the density ratios yesterday, we found that well, it must be we, we get the constant values of uh, rho by rho 0, p by uh, rho 0 r s dot square and u by r s when the Mach number is typically a greater than around 4 and therefore, the validity of this particular results are only in this region. In this region, the, the, the Mach number influences, let us say the, any, the jump conditions influences the profile and maybe in this case, the predictions may not really be that good. Therefore, what is it we have done? Using energy balance, we are able to get the lead shock mark number and if I get the value of m s square, I will be in a position to get my pressure also. That means, I have when, when, when the shock is propagating away at the lead shock, well I have the pressure initial pressure is P 0, I have a jump in pressure to a value P s and then it decays further. I can find out what is the jump in pressure and if I know the jump in pressure, I can always calculate the jump in pressure is P s the initial pressure is P naught and P s my P naught is the increase in pressure across a lead shock wave and this is something which is known as over pressure. Let us try to get an expression for the over pressure also. We, we do it, it is quite simple. We have done this already in a, in a sense in that we know the value of the shock pressure that means, we say P by rho naught into R s dot square. We said is equal to 2 into gamma plus 1 for a for the particular case of a strong blast wave that means, in this particular region. Well, I can simplify this and get it as P by rho 0 
divide by p0 in the numerator, divide by p0 in the denominator, you have rs dot square. Well, let me also divide the numerator and denominator of this particular expression in the denominator by gamma again. And now I have gamma p0 by rho 0 is equal to ms square and therefore, I can write the value of p by p0, let me use the same color chalk, p by p0 divided by gamma into m s square is equal to 2 over gamma plus 1 or rather I get the value of p by p 0 is equal to I get 2 into gamma plus 1 into gamma into m s square. And now, if you were to look back at the expression what we derived by for p divided by p 0 in the third and fourth classes, we had derived the expression p by p 0 is equal to 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 m s square minus gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1. Since this is a we are talking in terms of large Mach numbers, well gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1 is negligible and this is the pressure ratio. Therefore, let us calculate the pressure behind the shock to be able to distinguish between p and r. I can write this as p s that is behind the particular lead blast wave. I am interested in the value of p s over here and therefore, let us derive it. We all what we do is we substitute the value of m s square as we got by solving the energy equation either this or let us put the m s square as we got here. We got m s square is equal to 1 over 4 pi gamma i into r s by r naught cube so that we can determine the over pressure with particular distance. Let us do that now. We therefore write from the expression over there P s by P naught is equal to we get is equal to 2 gamma, 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 into m s square, but m s square is equal to 1 over 4 pi gamma i therefore, this I can write as equal to 2 gamma over gamma plus 1 into I get now 4 pi gamma i 4 pi gamma i into R s by R naught cube or rather in this I find gamma and gamma gets cancelled this cancels to giving 2 I get the value as equal to 1 over 2 into gamma plus 1 2 into gamma plus 1 into I into 1 over R s by R naught cube. In other words, I get the value of P s by P naught and what is the over pressure? Over pressure at the shock front is equal to I have a jump in pressure minus the ambient pressure therefore, the dimensionless over pressure is equal to P s minus P naught divided by P naught that means, you have P s by P naught minus 1 therefore, the value comes out to be 1 over 2 i into gamma plus 1 into 1 over r s by r naught cube. This is the value of the over pressure and mind you, now we know the value of over pressure or dimensionless over pressure as a function of the of the sux distance or distance divided by the explosion length over here. Let us take a look at this particular expression and see whether we can interpret this how the over pressure behaves with distance, we will substitute the values and what is it we get? Let us let us get the values, we get P s minus P 0 divided by P 0. I now have I is equal to 0 0.423, the gamma plus 1 is 2.4, I substitute the value, it gives me 0 0.156 divided by R s by R naught cube over here. This is the value of P s by P naught over here. I subtract 1, therefore, I should have subtracted 1 over here. I get this is the value. And now, if I plot this expression, that means, I plot the over pressure P s minus P naught divided by P naught as a function of R s by R naught. 
what is it I get? Let us again do this similar to what I have done over there for Mach number. I get at a value of R s by R naught is equal to 0 0.2, the value of the over pressure that is the dimensionless over pressure gives a, comes out to be 19. At the value of 0.3, R s by R naught is equal to 0 0.3, the value comes out to be 3.8. At the value of 0 0.4, the value comes out to be 1.44 and let us take one last value 0 0.5 at which the value comes out to be something like 0 0.25. In other words, if I join the, the values what I get is well the curve looks something like this. And what is it we find? Well, at 0 0.2, we found out that the Mach number was 4.1. Well, strong blast assumption is valid. 0 0.3, the Mach number was 2.2 for which the overpressure. You know, in other words, you know, when the Mach number has decayed to these type of values, well, I cannot really exp expect the overpressures to be correctly predicted because we found well the strong shock wave assumption is not valid. I cannot write the density ratio is gamma plus 1, gamma minus 1 or 2 over gamma plus 1 is equal to the shock pressure divided by rho 0 r s square and all that. And therefore, maybe in this region, in the region of the strong shock wave that is in the near field to the explosion, I would expect this expression to be really valid. Whereas, in the far field, this expression may not be totally valid. In other words, I have been able to get, but mind you, you know, in a, in a particular region, I can still predict my overpressures and therefore, using the energy equation, I am able to get the overpressure values. Well, this we have done quite a bit now. What are the, let us quickly summarize what little we have understood for the blast wave using the mass balance and energy balance. What did we tell ourselves? Well, from mass balance, what did we get? We found the following. Namely, when we have a strong blast wave that is in the area near to the source of the explosion, what is it we got? We found that maybe I have an explosion over here, I form a blast wave over here near to this. Well, most of the mass, the blast wave that is the blast wave as it moves, it sweeps, collects all the material and locates all the material in the zone of the lead shock wave. And this is what I have lot of mass here travels with a high velocity and this is what creates my compression or the, or the damage. Using the energy balance, what did we get? We have the over pressure, shock pressure minus the initial pressure divided by P naught is a function we get of 1 over R s by R naught cube, 1 over R naught cube over here minus 1 and therefore, I am able to predict for a given distance what is the type of pressure I have over here. Similarly, it is possible for me to predict the velocities, but let us quickly discuss what we have achieved so far in terms of some scaling. That means, Sark scaling in which I express the distance in terms of R naught has really been useful and I am able to get the over pressure from a blast wave. And over pressure is important because that is what creates a lot of damage for me because the, the high pressure compresses and damages a building, knocks down people and all that. Therefore, we use Sark scaling over here. Can I think of anything further? If I look at this particular expression, what is it I get? Can I talk in terms of other forms of scaling? Can I say, how does a blast wave scale for over pressures? In other words, let us ask our question scaling for over pressure. Can I, can I really solve for this? What do you mean by scaling for over pressure? Supposing I have an explosion in which let us say that the explosion length is R 0. That means, I deposit some energy E 0 and I get the explosion length as R 0 because energy release in a medium P 0 is able to define it. 
I am able to get maybe at some distance r is away, I am able to now predict what is my overpressure namely P s minus P 0 by P 0 minus 1, uh, this is the value of the overpressure, dimensionless overpressure. Now, instead of depositing E 0 by P 0 which is R 0 cube, supposing the energy deposited is such that I now have an energy deposited which is equal to lambda times, lambda could be a multiplication factor that means I deposit uh, a value equal of explosion length, equivalent explosion length to be lambda R naught. The same overpressure as per this expression will come out to be at a distance of lambda R s away will give me the same value. Why is it? Because lambda R s by lambda R naught comes out to be identical even though the energy is released is higher. Well, the scale of overpressure over here and scale of overpressure is same and this type of scaling laws in which I change my energy level in terms of R naught to lambda R naught is known as Kranz Hopkinson scaling law for overpressures. What does it state? It states in for if an observer is situated at a distance lambda r is away from an explosion whose explosion length is lambda r 0, he will feel the same overpressure as an observer who is stationed at a distance r is away from an explosion whose explosion length is r 0. As simple as that, this is Kranz Hopkinson scaling law and it is used left and right in the explosion industry because we would like to find out what is the what is the energy release from an explosion, how it, how it affects the pressure at some distance away and Kranz Hopkinson scaling is widely used. Let us try to interpret this in a slightly different form. We, we, we draw the last figure which I draw now is the figure of overpressure. I tell myself well I have P s minus P naught divided by P naught which is the dimensionless overpressure as a function of R s by R naught. We got this particular curve, we told our curve is valid only in the near region of the blast in which the blast wave is strong. And now once I know the energy release from the explosion, I know the ambient pressure, I can calculate R naught, I want to calculate the overpressure at a given distance. If the distance falls within this which is let us say around 0 0.25 or so, I can predict my overpressure and we are able to do some problems now. But you know if we look at certain books, they do not use the Sachs law in terms of explosion length, they rather plot instead of writing R naught, they plot the scale as equal to energy release to the power 1 by 3 because R naught is equal to E 0 by P 0 to the power 1 by 3, P 0 for most blasts in air is around 1 atmosphere pressure that is uh, 10 to the power 5 Pascal and therefore, they express it in this form and they get the value of P s minus P 0 by P 0 and therefore, they give a curve like this. But instead of looking at energy, since we are looking at energy release from an explosion and this energy release from an explosion is directly proportional to the mass of explosive used very often and why instead of even using energy over here, they put mass of the explosive used to the power 1 by 3. And this is how many books like Baker's book write in terms of R s by mass of the explosive or mass of the particular explosive used, we will take a look at this a little later and this is how figures are drawn. Well, this is Kranz Hopkinson scaling law, we are able to get the overpressures, but something which we must keep in mind. See I keep qualifying each time, we can predict in the near field of the explosive wherein the blast wave is high. Why? Because we, we showed earlier that the value of rho by rho 0, the at the shock front P s by rho 0 R s dot square and the value of u divided by R s dot are all about the same in this particular region because the jump conditions did not really depend on the Mach number square, 
Whereas, in this region it is a function of Mach number squared therefore, the integral which we used here in, in the expression as equal to 0 0.423 may really not be valid and therefore, it is only in this region which we can use. Let us try to get some more information of that and for that let us look at the assumptions what we made and with that maybe we will will be a little more wiser. What is the assumption which we made while de while deriving this overpressure relation? Well, we assume that the value of the initial internal energy of the medium is very much less than the internal energy of the medium which gets enhanced due to the blast wave. Rather, you will recall we had a spherical blast wave. We talked in terms of a small segment or a small annular area spherical shelf over here in which we said it is equal to E minus E 0 is equal to E. That means, we neglected the value of E 0. That means, what is it we have neglected? We have neglected the internal energy of the medium here. Can we find out under what conditions for all what value of R is by R naught? Does the internal energy of the medium become significant? Like let us say in this particular figure, if I find that R s by R naught for this for R s by R naught greater than this, E 0 becomes significant. Well, I can immediately say in this region, well the internal energy initial internal energy of the medium has to be considered and therefore, my predictions are valid only in this particular band or in this particular band of R s by R naught. Therefore, let us do that problem. Therefore, we tell ourselves well the shock is over here, the source is here, this is the shock which is R s distance away. And what is it we are telling ourselves? Well, the energy release of the by, by the source we say is again E 0 joules. And if the initial internal energy of the medium has to contribute, what is it we are saying? E 0 joules must be of the same order as the internal energy E 0 of the medium. But what is the internal energy of the medium is per unit mass. Therefore, we tell ourselves when E 0 is equal to 4 upon 3 that is the volume occupied by the particular volume within the lead shock wave 4 upon 3 pi into R s cube into the density which is the mass which is available here is equal to e, e, into E 0. That means, the internal energy of the medium here is of the same order as energy release. Well, I should be able to get a this particular point and beyond this what is happening is the initial internal energy affects my shock or affects my overpressure, affects my Mach number of the shock and therefore, I can, I can look at this particular expression and get a feel for what is the value of R s by R naught from this expression which will de decide whether the, the decide the region in which my predictions are quite reasonable. Let us do this. To be able to do this, I, I, I just simplify this expression. I get the value of E 0 divided by 4 upon 3 pi into R s cube divided by rho 0 is equal to E 0. And what is E 0? Internal energy per unit mass which is equal to C V T that is specific heat at constant volume into temperature because we know that d e by, by d of temperature is equal to C v, C v t is the value and C v we have seen earlier can be written as again we do that C p minus C v is equal to specific gas constant C v is equal to therefore, r divided by gamma minus 1. Therefore, I, I get the value of C v t as equal to r t by gamma minus 1 or this is equal to P 0 and the ambient temperature is T 0, this is equal to P 0 by rho 0 and therefore, this part C V T I can replace by the value of P 0 by R 0 is R T 0 into 1 over gamma minus 1, I carry this forward here and therefore, C V T can be replaced by or E 0 can be replaced by the expression 1 over gamma minus 1 into P 0 by rho 0. And if I were to solve this particular expression over here, what is it I get? 
I get E0, I bring P0 over here in the numerator divided by what is it I get? Well, rho 0, rho 0 gets cancelled over here. I, I get 4 upon 3 pi into R s cube is all what is left over here is equal to 1 over gamma minus 1. I have apportioned the terms. E0 by P0 is what we call as cube of the explosion length E0 by P0 to the power 1 by 3 energy release in the medium 1 by 3 is equal to R0 and therefore what is it I get? I, I simplify this and I get the value of Rs by R0 cube. Bring it on the right hand side over here must be equal to I get the, the value of gamma minus 1 divided by 3 comes on top 3 into gamma minus 1 divided by 4 pi 3 into gamma minus 1 divided by 4 pi is equal to this particular value and what is the value? Now, I am, I am able to find out the value of R s by R naught at which the, the value is such that if, if R s by R naught is greater than this value, this value let me get the precise number for you. The, the value of R s by R naught is equal to put the value 3 into 0 0.4 divided by 4 into 3.142 which is equal to 0 0.095 or rather the value of R s by R naught taking the cube root comes out to be 0 0.46 and therefore what is it we tell ourselves? If the value of R s by R naught is greater than this particular value, well my predictions are all wrong because the initial internal energy begins to play a role and predictions will be much lower than this. But, in, but we also found when it is 0 0.4, the Mach number of the shock has already decreased to a value around 2 or something and it is still in the weak blast region. The predictions what we have done so far are therefore valid only for values around let us say less than around. 0.25 or 0.3. This is where I conclude today and to be able to put things in perspective, what is it we have done? We have looked at the energy conserved by the lead shock wave. We have been able to get an expression for P s that is the over pressure behind the B, B, uh, over pressure uh, of the blast wave. And so, in addition to this, we talked in terms of Kranz Hopkinson scaling law, we talked in terms of Sack scaling law which was able to give us this expression. We also did in the last class the mass balance which told that whenever I have a strong blast region, well the mass gets concentrated at the front and this is this, this mass concentration is something like a hammer or something like a snow plow which moves my material at high velocity and does the damage. Therefore, in, in the next class what we look at is we have we are looking at only the strong blast region. We would like to take a look at the weak blast region such that we can we can have some expressions for this. But in the weak blast region it is somewhat more difficult because as we tell ourselves the initial conditions are dependent on Mach number. Therefore, we look at the weak region and get the overall that means, in, in both the strong blast region and the far field region in which the blast wave has decayed, we will try to get the over pressures. And in addition to this, we will also take a look at impulses and with that, we would be done with the blast waves. Well, thank you then.